This is Android Basics, in which we bring you up to date on the things that you should know to use your Android phone. We're going to look at uh, interesting developments in 2023 on Android, and those are in the fields of artificial intelligence. Austin, have you got some things to say about this? So a lot of AI developments are going on. One of the recent development was Google introduced BARD and Lambda, the two AIs, the two AI platforms, and also in the phones, a lot of AI is being integrated. Some of them are in the camera fields. Some of them are Samsung is integrating a new one in the S24 where if you get a call, it can translate the text of the caller into 14 or some different languages and you can read it and then you can decide whether you want to answer the call. So if it's a robocall, a voice, whatever, the IR or the computer that speaks to you before the call is answered, it can translate that. And also there's some driving mode where you can tell it to what it needs to say to the opposing uh, to the calling party and it will tell that for you along with some developments in chat gpt there's a new version out uh, 4.5 even the free version has been upgraded to version uh, 20 uh, to january 2022 update so there's a lot of ai developments so one of the thing is that ai is uh, also a threat to individual jobs like just today, Google was laying off uh, 30,000 employees. I don't know if it's related to AI or what, but yes, AI is going forward and Windows 12, they say, is going to come with AI. So AI is going to come in everything. So it's in cameras, it's in the phone camera, it's in the driving mode, it's in your call answering technology and lots and lots like Asus is going to integrate it into gaming. The ROG Phone 8 that is going to come recently is going to come with AI for gaming mode. So these were some of the short developments in AI in 2023. Some of them will be coming out in 2024, uh, at least the first quarter. And it's worth mentioning a few apps that have got dropped. Uh, you mentioned Chat GPT. Uh, that now has an official uh, Android app. There were uh, 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 front ends from uh, third parties, but Chat GPT itself exists uh, on Android. And in the, uh, in, in, in the in the blindness specific uh, arena, we've had a couple of exciting developments uh, towards the end of the year. My my personal favourite is seeing AI uh, from Microsoft being rolled out with some AI capabilities. Um, it's, it's an exciting app outside of the AI arena, obviously, but that has uh, the ability to describe images. Uh, you can you can share images with it and have uh, different levels of description of those images. And be my be my AI, uh, a feature of be my eyes was rolled out this year. Uh, took a little while to get to Android, uh, and, and while you can't share images with be my AI yet, you can take uh, uh, pictures of scenes and it will have uh, AI describe those. Um, I think at the minute seeing AI is the way to go. Uh, between those two because as I say you can share images with seeing AI and have them described. Uh Kareen, you you're not a, you're not a, an AI skeptic, are you? But you have uh, you have you have certain issues with it or, or things that we ought to watch out for when we use AI and not to rely on it too much. Well AI itself is a very interesting development. And the the models like ChatGPT and uh, the one that Google is using, G Gemini. Uh, they, they are great and they are helping a lot. Like in describing images in the uh, conversational style, when you're trying to, to sometimes you're tr trying to make brainstorming, you can use ChatGPT. It is something great sometimes to correct stuff and a lot of other things. But the problem is that AI is going everywhere. It is like Look at the camera features that were added to pixels. AI is altering images. It is able to delete things from the from the from the image itself. It is able to like always giving you the perfect shot, which is like 
impacting the memories of people. Do you remember the days when people were just uh, like using those cameras, which were uh, even not having screens, and the photo will just uh, stay with you for years, and then you will remember, oh, I was like this during this time, and oh, like look how how were my eyes at that at that moment. So all of those memories, people of this age are not going to, or of this generation are not going to have. This is one point. So AI is altering everything. Other thing, another thing is the which which is we all which is the thing that we all talk about, which is the hallucinations it, and the the over like the, the way that it, overconfidence. Yeah, it is overconfidence. So you you hallucinate, but at the same time you try to convince me that what you are saying is true. So this is a problem. We are talking about image description for blind people, for, for a blind person who is just relying on the description and you are just giving this person the wrong information. And the, the last thing is AI is making people truly lazy. So AI is going to make everything for you. For you. It will summarize things for, things for you. It will just uh, like um, do your homework. It will do your writing it will do so this generation is um is going to become a lazy generation i think i don't know if you if you agree with me on that but yeah this is one of the negatives of ai and that karen girl i didn't agree with you about ram but here you and i are on the same page you mentioned something about photography for example you know sometimes back with those you know cameras with the little fish eye and all of that and you take a picture maybe just capture the feet of the person uh, <laughs> or whatever and uh you can fix that it's what it is and all of that and i i really like that idea but now you know with ai you you don't have that experience anymore everything gets corrected for you and all of that and then of course you mentioned something about uh, you know, dumbing down the kids, and I am right there with you because back in our days, you know, we wrote essays and you got to research things and you got to go to the library and did all this and that, uh, making sure that you write your essays right. Now, if you just simply now you just have an AI, you know, write essays for you and all of that, uh, frankly, I think it's taking away from them what we have. I mean, I thought that. You know, um, our generation was was bad, was dumped down. Uh, when I looked at the curriculum back in the 50s and all of that, uh, you know, like uh, elementary uh, school curriculum, uh, the high schoolers couldn't even shake a stick at or would not be able to hold up the candle up to what elementary schools were back in the 50s. Now, just imagine what it's going to be like with all this AI, even college students that are now using that to write their papers. It's such a sad uh, situation. I mean, it's great uh, in other aspects. I love some other aspects of it. I've not been a big AI guy. I haven't jumped on board uh, like Austin and his chat GPT and all of that. But uh, I see where it comes in handy, especially for those of us who are blind. Uh, and like you said, Carrie, and most especially with describing images, someone sends me a picture and I don't know that there was a dark in the background or maybe a lake in the background or a set of trees and all of that. So it's great to finally know what's there in a picture, just like the audio description of movies that we didn't know what was going on in the background. You know, now we know that because of audio description and all of that. So I see that AI, you know, playing that role. And it's a very important thing, uh, yet in the same breath, it's a double-edged sword that we need to be very careful about. And like Austin mentioned, uh, Google laying of uh, workers, and everyone is doing this, and it's because of AI, whether we like it or not. It's just a, a sad affair. So you, you train the kids on AI, and then they don't have a job because AI is doing the job. Now, who's losing here? It's a sad affair. I mean, it's a great thing. I don't know where to draw the line. It's a curse and a blessing. But you know, these are the simple things that Warren said, writing papers and essays. Chat GPT can do much more. If you tell it to write a novel, give it a scene and it will write like pages and pages and give you. Even I tried a demo with Chat GPT. I gave it the script. I gave it like uh, the name of the show, reflecting on 2023, all the phones launching this year. And it wrote a skeleton and gave it to me. 
uh, we all we need to do is just lay it down and just feel our comments into it and the show is ready so it can script your youtube videos your novels and the best thing is the free version does not have any limitations yes the knowledge that it has in the free version is old it's more than a year old almost and that is the only point but one advice for people do not use chat gpt for any health related things or i mean it can tell you the side effects of the medicines or the effects of those but suggest the medicine for this and this that should not be done so while chat gpt can do some things there are some things where it can make mistakes and this is very clearly written on the top of the chat gpt uh, page they also demoed the chat gpt app i think in the last uh, app bonanza of our podcast and google is laying off 30000 employees that is the truth but also there is going to be new jobs especially for ai development maintaining ai so if somebody wants to go into a field and does not uh, is confused on which field to go for i would suggest that they should do a course on ai and pursue the ai field because there is a lot of scope in ai so there is something related to uh, writing stuff which were you were talking about which is the uh, ability to write essays and write novels and that okay it can write it can write articles it can but actually the problem is that it uses one way and you are able to see that it is becoming like oh, everything is becoming similar so you ask chat gpt sometimes i ask chat gpt to 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 check my article okay and to do the necessary corrections and i end up having a totally different <laughs> way and totally different writing which is like it is easy for me to know that this is written by by chat gpt so actually it is enforcing its way of writing on people which will be a problem when all of the people are going to use this and are going to to like feel okay uh, it's easier it is it is like not time consuming so i'm going to use it but it will be the problem because we will be having one way of writing everything will be similar and people will not check the the article after that so we might we, we might also end up with uh like wrong information So yeah, it it is it is a problem. And as we said before, the hallucinations are an issue. So Warren talked about having a a photo with a dog or trees in the background, and as long as they actually do have dogs and trees in the background, but uh, hopefully it, it will get better at knowing when it's wrong or it might be wrong, and have some sort of confidence rating with it. And the the laziness dumbing down thing is interesting because. sort of where do you draw the line when a productivity tool comes on the market uh is it is it making people lazy you know do people say the same thing about the calculator the typewriter because handwriting standards went down i guess i guess we'll see uh for that but uh yeah the, the fact that it is it is trusted and at the same time can be wrong i think uh, are what my major concerns are with it It's funny you mentioned the handwriting thing uh Ed cuz my daughter my youngest daughter by the way a happy birthday to my little girl she turned 16 uh on Thursday the 28th uh so <laughs> I can't imagine you know my youngest turning 16 but you know we got to talking about It's handwriting cool to her then <laughs> oh brother <laughs> leave my little girl alone uh <laughs> Uh so you were talking about you know handwriting and stuff I uh, and and uh, uh she's you know we were having her sign something and she's like oh I don't know how to do cursive I just do it this way and so you know my wife and I were talking about that and lamenting the fact that you know kids don't know how to do cursive writing anymore uh something that used to be uh but you know like you mentioned you know the typewriter and all of that yeah these are great inventions and all of that and you know I'm not you know throwing uh the baby out with the bath water here uh ai is great like i said you know we've got a lot of our potentials and all of that it's just my concern is that uh people are no longer going to know how to think anymore and do things on their own and always go for the computer to help uh have it 
uh, help them with doing stuff, common mundane stuff. I mean, I heard someone talking about, you know, uh, Pi AI or, you know, how it knows their, you know, their feelings and will speak to them this way or that. I don't need AI to be telling me, oh, Warren, don't be sad. It'll be okay. Oh, please, no. Give me a break. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> there you have it. That's just my concern about all of this, but it's a great tool. And like I said, it's hard to know where to draw a line between a curse and a blessing. Or a cursive and a blessing in that instance. You know, from the time auto corrected, everything has come in. People's spellings and grammars have really gone down like anything. Yeah, it's true. Uh, and I guess that's. Uh, that, that's a consequence when we have tools to help us with things that uh, we used to do differently. Uh, the previous skill will will decline. Yeah, Austin, you mentioned, mentioned don't ask chat, chat GPT any medical issues because you're going to want to go to uh, your doctor for that kind of information. But just think in 10 years, all the doctors will have had chat GPT write all their papers in med school. Yeah, that is it. I mean, it has even it has even cracked some uh, entrance exams somewhere in India, I think, and some other countries. That's why governments are banning chat GPT in some of the some of the countries. I think Canada, it banned. I don't know where else, but it has cracked a lot of entrance exams. Yeah, I think if it's used to write medical papers, though, that will prove to be a bitter pill to swallow for patients. And for those who don't know what is cracked, it has passed or whatever it's called, it's like surpass the marks that required to for you to succeed in your entrance exam. You know, John, it's funny you mentioned the doctor's uh, stuff, and I'm not going to mention any names here on this episode or whatever, but so we took my kid to a doctor someplace, and believe it or not, <laughs> That person was looking up Google. And so my wife was telling some other, uh, some of our colleagues at, at school, and they were like, oh, no, we don't go to that that doctor uh, because she doesn't know what she's doing, you know, looking things up on Google. So it's just amazing uh, how this thing is going down. And it's going to be a sad affair, like I said, because, and you mentioned spelling, uh, Ed, uh, or what I think it was Austin that mentioned spelling. I used to be a very good speller. And I tell you, with the autocorrect and all of that, um, sometimes my spellings are terrible and I have to use the computer <laughs> to help me uh, spell check my work. Uh, but back in the day when we used typewriters, you didn't have that opportunity of correcting uh, your stuff. And I remember the first time word processors came along and it was such a great tool and you can use a word processor, you make a mistake, you can erase uh, whatever. And so look at where we are today and uh, autocorrect going on. I don't even have to finish typing and it knows what I'm thinking of next based on the previous word. It's just amazing. <laughs> 